Thank you so much for uh, inviting us to come to to ceremony here. This is a venerable doctor. Sila Vimala from University of Berkeley. He has been teaching there almost now 40 years, now retired, but he's still teaching. This venerable Dr. Sila Rathana, he is a well known Buddhist scholar in Korean. Uh, in Korea, he lived and taught Korean universities. So we are very happy to come here again and thank you. Dharmajiva <laughs> and Mithma, <laughs> uh, both of them are ordained, initiated the uh, ministers. So what we're going to do first, we open in initiation ceremony here, these three statues. After that, I will give a little talk, then uh, Dr. Sila Vimala is going to give a Dhamma talk uh, topic is uh, uh, compassion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then we're going to start. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Mahma Karo Niko Nato Itaya Sabha Padinam Puretva Parami Sabha Patro Sambo Dimutta Mangyen Satcha Vajjen Otu Te Kaya Mangyalam Jayanto Bodhiyamune Sakyanam Nandi Vajjano Vantu Yam Jayo Bodhu Jayasu Jayamangalam Sakkartva Buddha Ratanam Mosadam Uttamam Varam Nitam Devamanasanam Buddha Tejenam so Satyana Santu Padva Sapi Kaupa Samin Tutte Sakkatva Dhammaratanam Osatam Uttamam Varam 
आउनेयम पाउनेयम संते के न सोते न न संतु पत्वासा बेरु प्राउप समिंतु ते सकत्वासंगरतनं मोचदंमोचमंगरं आहुनेयम आहुनेयम संगते के न सोते तिनाना संतु पद्वासा बेरोगा ऊपर समिंतु ते अम किंचिरतनं लोके विच्छति विविदा पुत्र रतनं बुद्ध समन्नति तस्मा सोति पावन्तु ते अम किंचिरतनं लोके विच्छति विविदा पुत्र Dhamm samanati tasma sotti bhavantu te am kinti ratanam loke vichyati vividam Ratanam sang samanati tasma sotti bhavantu te nati me saranam anyam buddho me saranam Yechen sachya vachya de bodhu te kaya mangu Manati me saranam anyam dhammu me saranam varang Yechen sachya vachya de bodhu te kaya mangu Manati me saranam anyam me saranam varang Itin sachya vachya de bhutu te jayam Galam sapiti o vivachyantu Sabdaro vinasasu Mate pavatvantarayu Sukhiti kayu ko pavatvantu Sab mangalam rakhantu Sab devasa Bhutanu bhavin saka sutti bhavantu te bhavatu sapa mangalam rakhantu sapa devata sapa dhamman bhavin saka sutti bhavantu te bhavatu sapa mangalam rakhantu sapa devata sapa sanghanu bhavin Very happy to come to see you again. 
这些的是讲我听不来了，不是。Today's very wonderful menu is, you know, the world needs a lot of compassion. I hope you heard, even in Sri Lanka, some of our churches were attacked and highest highest group and kill around 250 people, destroy many properties and so forth. Because because people do not have compassion, therefore we have to develop compassion. This is the mother, greatest compassion person in the planet. We call Bodhisattva. Of course, the other Bodhisattva, Samantha Bhattri, and also other one is Manjushri, also greatest Bodhisattva, according to our Buddhist Mahayana canon. Hmm? You know, in Theravada, also believe Samantha Bhattri, uh, Manjushri, one in different form we call different name. Huh? Yet we all have a greatest respect. Personally, my experiences I share with you. After that, I go to the Bhante to give a Dhamma talk because he's an excellent Dhamma preacher. Therefore, he's <coughs> living in Sacramento area and Berkeley, hard to get here. <clears throat> then, uh, therefore, we have to take advantages. You know, this one Yin has the greatest compassion, historical background you can read, go to the even internet, hmm? <laughs> uh, how uh, compassion and love and protection and everything. When I arrived to this country in 1976, I brought a lot of books, Buddhist books, those days not available in this country because I came to do my PhD at Northwestern University. Therefore, I brought so many books in Pali as well as uh, uh, some of our Sinhalese language, same time some English, very historical books. Then where I was in a meditation center, international meditation center, I could not have a place to put. Then one of members came to temple. I asked, could you kindly, I go into, it was 1976 uh, of December. Hmm? I asked, I will go to Chicago Northwestern University in December 26. <coughs> 20, like a 20. Could you kindly keep my these three bags with you in your home and can you bring for me 24? He didn't bring. I was so worried. Then went to find out that I called many, many times, never answer phone either. Then I was so worried and sad, I don't know what to do. One of my students, American uh, monk, name is Pandito, in fact, he was in uh, San Diego Lao Temple for a while. And uh, this one suggested me, let us go to Kwanin Temple. We meditate and tell the go to tell the Kwani. I agreed. Then we went together around uh, 7 p.m. We sit in, chanting, both of them meditated. Around 10 p.m. that gentleman who got my books, all of boxes, came and knocked the temple door. We opened. He came and explained his what happened. He could not sleep. He, he went to uh, go to bed around 8 p.m. 
he went sleeping and pushing him, put him down, he drove back. Give to Bhante, book. He doesn't know sound where I'm coming from. Sound say, go, go, go. Give to book to Bhante. Then he's coming, he's looking for me. Finally came to the Kwanin temple in a international Buddhist meditation center nearby another one block. Far from there was a temple. Then he came and handed over all books. That's a, my personal experience. Since then, honestly, I have a great respect for her. Even my members come to see me, sometimes counseling, especially Chinese or Thai. I tell them to keep your home one in statue, small one, and give a water glass every day in the morning offer. In the evening, <coughs> change to the another one and drink and again put a new one and your problems over. Most of time, 80% people <coughs> came to me reported their problem over due to offering water, respecting her. They, because of, uh, in, as you know, uh, very famous, some psychologists, uh, uh, Will Max wrote a psycho the book. He mentioned that if you worship someone, automatically if you believe, worship, venerate, respect, you either become on this path or you receive somebody you need. That's really true. Therefore, I do not take much time. Again, greatly appreciate. I call Dhamma Jeeva, Reverend Dhamma Jeeva, Reverend uh, Medma. Hmm? That's a high name you call Maggie or whatever your name. But I call Medma Mindi, Met Mindi loving kindness. Ma, mother of loving kindness. Dharma Jiva means the person whole life uh, living under the righteousness so we. So these two people are organizing the ceremony and brought the statues and Maggie herself went to Taiwan and a lot of uh, work on behalf of you. Uh, brought these statues. That's the greatest thing. Uh, thanks to them also and for you. Now I requested to Bhante Siva Vimala, Bhante Madhavala Sila Vimala. Usually people call Bhante. Hmm? This is Bhante here. Thank you very much, Pyananda. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I also like to uh, thank uh, Dhammajiva and Mitma for inviting Venerable Piananda so I could also come. I have been here before uh, to uh, see the place when they first bought it and I'm so glad that uh, this is uh, growing so beautifully. Most importantly, I like to uh, congratulate you for being able to connect to this place. Uh, connect to this place means uh, connecting to uh, wisdom and compassion. <clears throat> compassion cannot exist by itself. Com compassion always go hand in hand with wisdom. Wisdom is not just being smart, it's being able to see the causes and conditions of life. That's called wisdom. Huh? Uh, today we have uh, Kwanin's uh, statue in front of you and Manjushri and uh, uh, Samantabhatra. Uh, Kwan Yin to me is, uh, uh, before that I want to tell you something else. Uh, Kwan Yin uh, basically represents compassion and Manjushri uh, represents uh, wisdom and 
the samanta bhadra samanta means uh, overall all over samanta bhadra means beautiful beautiful in every aspect of this personality that is samanta bhadra huh? so these are the three uh, bodhisattvas uh, bodhisattva statues that you have here and uh, who is the actual uh, representation of these two um, concept of compassion and wisdom is buddha when you look at the buddha image you are actually looking at wisdom and compassion not a statue not a person that's a symbol symbol of wisdom and compassion what wisdom and compassion ultimate wisdom and, wisdom and compassion if there is the highest wisdom and highest compassion anywhere you put that together and put it in front of you and that is the buddha image but this is a compassion avalokiteshwara the kanin is called avalokiteshwara avalokiteshwara means the lord of waiting lord of waiting but waiting for what waiting to be the next buddha in other words this avalokiteshwara kanin has developed the compassion to the highest level but 99.9 but not 100 <laughs> so the 100 he comes as uh, maitreya met met man come from maitreya he will come back to world as uh, buddha as the buddha and then he finishes term now most important thing that you have to know here is the buddha that just like bante uh, pianander mentioned uh, he was lost to find his uh, books that he need to take to chicago following day and he don't know how to find it he went to one in temple and uh, sat down and meditate and request some help and the help came immediately right buddha don't get if you go to pray and sit down in front of the buddha buddha doesn't give any help because buddha is in nirvana already completed his term and what he had to do is teaching the dharma has he has given the dharma uh, in a complete form that is beautiful in the beginning complete in the beginning beautiful in the middle complete in the middle uh, beautiful in the end buddha's teaching is always completely perfect when you read the teachings of the buddha uh, completely flawless and you don't even have a place to ask a question other than the language question and cultural question you might ask but otherwise there's no reason no place for you to ask a question because when the buddha speak he speak uh, perfectly beautifully and completely and uh, that is the teachings of the buddha but uh, kwan yin the buddha became enlightened and he entered the nirvana and he he is uh, go to uh, nothingness but the person who is sitting in front of you is a bodhisattva who is still alive and well and in uh, practice what is the practice of the bodhisattva is to help all beings in order to help them in any way that he can so you go and ask uh, help from kanin kanin is always here to help you because he's an actual person a lot uh we call him maitreya but in the mahayana tradition gradually the avalokiteshvara and then kanin is a chinese word all this means ultimately the future buddha but most of them even don't know that he is the one who's preparing himself to be the perfect com- perfect compassionate being so uh is a coming coming one so it's very uh, you are very lucky to be here uh, because whenever you have any uh difficulties in your heart or in your mind you can come here and sit down and look at the 
the image uh, for a short time um, and express your feelings. That means like you're talking to somebody who is caring, who is loving, who is helping, who is ready to help. Uh, so you are lucky to have uh, this uh, uh, statue in this place and all the other statues also. And uh, what happened today was, you have to remember, uh, this month came and we recited uh, some sutras and we uh, brought the merchandise that maybe Metma bought in Taiwan at the store. That was a merchandise and we brought it up here and put it up there. And when you were sitting here before we came, it was a merchandise. It's a Buddha statue. Now we gave the life to those statues. So they are actually um, full of energy now. So full of energy and full of life. So you can actually look at his eyes and talk to, just like you're talking to someone who is there to help you and guide you. So you, that's why you're lucky. So uh, I have uh, uh, Theravada tradition, we don't have a Kwan Yin, but we have Maitreya. So most people don't know Maitreya and Kwan Yin is the same. So in my temple, I have a huge statue in Sacramento I'm talking about. Huge statue with a beautiful pond in front. Uh, Kwan Yin image came from a uh, Chinese country, which is uh, Malaysia. The Chinese artist did the thing, thinking that that is uh, Kwan Yin. But uh, I call him, that's my prayer with this image. I never call him Kwan Yin image. Because the, from the Theravada tradition, we give the Theravada name. So I call that so Maitreya Bodhisattva means the future Buddha who is getting ready to, who is preparing himself to come to the human realm, uh, who is waiting to come to the human realm and become enlightened. Okay, so that is one thing. Uh, that is done now. So uh, do we have uh, Kuan Yin, a little bit of Kuan Yin in here, in us? Do we have a lot of... Uh, at some uh, somewhat uh, uh, metta might Buddha in here? Yes. The, generally, you have heard we all have Buddha nature. Uh, that is a different meaning, but you can translate that also into uh, into a meaning that we have a little bit of Buddha in there. Buddha in us. These uh, two or three images represent the Buddha. All three. So you about the three or even one that represents you about to the Buddha himself. So we all have a perfectly healthy emotions in a very limited way. There are four emotions of the Buddha, four em emotions of these three bodhisattvas uh, every time. They are, they are beings, beings have emotions. When they have emotions, uh, they have emotions, and when the emotion activate, you actually do something. Your tendency to be angry is there, you get angry and you yell at somebody. That's the action. So the emotions are all placed there, the tendency of wholesome emotion and unwholesome emotions. In our case, we have unwholesome emotions and wholesome emotions at the same time. In the case of all the bodhisattvas, they have overcome all the unwholesome emotions and the wholesome emotions are the most dominating emotions of these, uh, these beings. When they take an action, it's always a wholesome action, it's a beautiful action. In our case, we do a lot of nice things and we do a lot of bad things. That's us. But why are we becoming Buddhist? Why are we practicing Dharma? Practicing Buddhism or practicing Dharma? We want to minimize the negative side of us and we want to increase the positive side of us. And that means that you are calling, that is why you are calling yourself a Buddhist. A Buddhism is a religion that uh, does not require worship. This is not a place of worship. This is a place of practice. Because this is a Buddhist setting. 
Buddhist center is always a place of practice. But you practice, minimize the negative side of yourself and they increase the positive side of yourself. There are eight emotions, positive and neg negative, but I focus on the positive emotions, the basic positive emotion of the Buddha, basic positive emotion of all these uh, um, the bodhisattvas are called loving kindness, caring, caring, ability to care for all beings. In her case, who is a mother, uh, she can care for only her child, children. She loves her children. The, in the case of the person who increased their ability to care, they care for more than their own children. But more than that. Most of us are pretty good people, actually. We not only care for our family and our friends, but we go beyond and we care for other beings, but not the whole world. So when it comes to um, people of different colors, you, you brought stuff there. Uh, when the people come from different race, uh, different country, we block ourselves. And then uh, that is us. But in the case of both Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, unlimited, limitless, limitless caring. Because they have practice. That's what we are doing. We are increasing our ability to be limitlessly care for all things. That's the base emotion that's called metta. When you have this emotion, as a mother, you love your children, but the child is in danger or child is in trouble or child is in pain, the mother immediately reacts to that pain, that child's pain. Call the doctor or go to the hospital or whatever, uh, she can do to alleviate, minimize the pain of uh, that child is caring turned into compassion. Compassion means, very important, huh? compassion is uh, emotion that you, um, that lead you to alleviate the pain of someone else that you see in pain. Somebody uh, fall from the bicycle or something and you are sitting by, you immediately run and make it, get him up and take the bicycle and move, uh, move that person out of the road and all that things done by compassion. But the base emotion that you moved there was caring. That's called metta. The metta is coming from metta. Metta is the base emotion. It turned, in this situation, it turns into compassion. When the Buddha start looking at the world, he constantly see a lot of people are suffering, experiencing frustration and fear and sadness and worries and all these things. So the Buddha's mind is constantly in operation with compassion. The, this Bodhisattva uh, look at the world, waiting also means looking for, I'm waiting for my friends which I'm looking for my friends. Uh, look, um, our law economy means looking. Our local means looking. Okay, anyway, so when they look at the world, they only see the pain and suffering of so many people, and their emotion is mostly compassion. The active emotion is compassion. But the third emotion, when the your the mother, son, or daughter is uh, getting married or passing a big exam or something. Who is the happiest? The mother is the happiest. And opposite is being jealous. Mother will never be jealous. Always be happy. Happy for other person. When your best friend is getting married or when your best friend's birthday and you talk to all other friends of all of you and uh, organize a beautiful um, surprise party or something, that is done by this emotion. That's called Sympathetic joy is uh, not a very good translation. Mudita means happiness for others' success. It's an emotion, it arises. That emotion makes you do something. So you, uh, your, your grandmother, you are the grandmother, and you, you hear that your granddaughter passed this big exam, and you uh, write a card and put a big check in there and mail it. That's <laughs> action. 
And uh, so that's mudita. Huh? So the metta with the base emotion, the karuna when the situation arises in front of you, that emotion arises. When another situation arises, that's mudita. That emotion is called uh, sim that's called sympathetic joy. Not a very good English translation. Happiness for other success. And the third one, if the mother has two kids, um, two of them are arguing, and both of them are trying to get you involved in the argument to uh, get you in one child's side, mother will say, get away from you. I'm busy, can't you see? Why? Mother cannot take sides. Don't want. That is called equanimity. Don't want to take sides. So, um, these are called the divine emotions. Divine Brahma, we have. Divine emotions. We all have it, now. We all have these four emotions that we go. And we, our problem is we have four other emotions, that is opposite emotions. As opposed to loving and caring, loving kindness and caring, we have anger and hatred and dislike and all that side. And as opposed to compassion, we want to give them pain. You see a driver who is fast, uh, driving too fast on the freeway, and you wish, oh, I wish the cop is there. That's not, that's cruelty. But you get mad at somebody, you push him around. And you get mad at somebody, you take the gun and shoot that person. Take a knife and mm, stab that person. That's all come from uh, opposite of compassion, cruelty. And the opposite of uh, uh, mudita, happiness for somebody else is the jealousy. So we, instead of, uh, when we become jealous, uh, we want to uh, see the failure of that particular person that you are jealous of. You don't want that person to be happy. But in our case, Buddhist case, uh, when you see somebody who is doing well, and then you want to increase the happiness of that person. That's why you uh, organize different parties, and that's why you organize wedding parties nicely, and all the good things that you do to help someone uh, make sure that other person um, happiness is uh, improved. Uh, that is good. So the uh, jealousy is the another one. And the fourth one, take sides. Being judgmental, being prejudiced, you know, and discriminating. Uh, you are black, I'm white. You are Buddhist, I'm Christian. You are Muslim, I'm uh, Catholic. Something, something like that. You always cut you cut the other person. But the more more Buddhist you become, you don't discriminate. More Buddhist you become, you don't judge other people by the class and the trace and the color and none of those things. So these bodhisattvas are treating everyone equally, no matter where, where you are coming from, uh, for them is a friend. Metta is the thing. Metta makes you see as a friend. When you see your friend is in pain, that is when you take the action to uh, eliminate the pain of your friend. So the metta, karuna, mudita, upekka, four emotions. Okay? So four healthy emotions and other ones are the unhealthy emotions. But in our case, we have mixed emotions. But more Buddhists you become, you become more healthier in your emotional state and uh, less uh, of unhealthy emotions you become. So then uh, when you keep coming here, uh, really practicing, Buddhist is not a person who believes in the Buddha, uh, believing in the, in uh, Pandin or any other thing. Uh, you see the Dharma and see how it works and you follow that. How it works means cause and effect. How the cause and effect, that's called wisdom. When these things happen, this will happen. When I do this way, it, this is the result. If I talk to my wife nicely, I will be treated nicely by my wife, simple. And this is a cause and effect. 
So today, uh, too much uh, time we don't have. We have other things to do, I guess. And uh, I'm very, <laughs> very glad that you came and the funding and the compassion. But the compassion is coming from the base emotion is called uh, loving kindness. Loving kindness is also not a very good translation. It's uh, being able to treat all and every other person as your best friend. That's very hard. You need practice. That's why we say it's, we are practicing. Uh, one time I, I saw this uh, lady, a homeless lady, uh, who is uh, sitting uh, close to uh, where I go to campus. I walk from my house to the campus for a library or something. And then this lady always bowed to me like this. And uh, homeless lady. And uh, I also bow a little bit and then go. One day I had some little extra time, maybe I was not in rush, when she would go like this in front of me. When I passed, uh, are you a Buddhist? You know what she said? Trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be a Buddhist. Uh, see, this is a message. So we are all trying to be Buddhist, but you have to try hard and you get immediate result. Immediate result. That's a guaranteed in uh, the Buddha's teaching. If you do it right, if you turn the light on, immediate result. Darkness go away, right? Immediately like that. Not next life. Not, you don't have to wait for future. So immediate next life. So today uh, you are practicing uh, Dhamma. Uh, Dhamma practice means practice of uh, your a horse of emotions and eliminating the negative emotions and uh, so uh, if you uh, focusly do that you will see the immediate results your life is going to be so serene and so beautiful and so peaceful as opposed to uh, whatever happened around you that is the key when we live our life a lot of things happen around us we get emotional by seeing what happens around us. All of us are like that. Even the monks get emotional, uh, negatively or positively, right? If uh, he said, I see kids, kids are always uh, nice and happy kids, and then you immediately develop metta, caring, loving kindness, right? So uh, uh, today, I'm so glad uh, that you came here. And remember, uh, we are uh, people with uh, mixed emotions, but all these enlightened beings are free from all the negative emotions that we have, but they only have uh, positive emotions, that is positive action. And whatever we get from them is always positive. So Buddha's teaching is ultimate positive um, message that make all of us healthier and happier and more joyful. And uh, being Buddhist means uh, not a person who is believing in a religion, uh, not a person who is believing in a dogma, uh, not a person who is believing in any certain view as opposed to your view, your, your idea, your belief, what you believe and what I believe is different. No, we, we constantly keep looking at the, uh, at the teaching uh, which help us to see things a little bit more clearly. Buddha's teaching is only helping us to see clearly. You know, when you go to the lab, uh, when you're in the high school or something, uh, you have the uh, test that is done by somebody else before. We look at the uh, we look at the that report and we follow the same uh, same test, and then we get the exact same result, just like you see in the theory. Paper, theory book, you know, text, textbook. That's right. So Buddha's teaching is exactly like that. I call Buddha's teaching is a manual for life, manual of life. That's what the Buddha's teaching is. We call it religion, we call it philosophy, we call it whatever you want to call. But technically, it is only the manual for your life. If you have a life and you don't have a manual, you are lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's most of us are like that. But if you have a bit like all of us have a life, and then now we have a manual. The teachings of the Buddha is the manual for that life. 
right? Thank you very much for listening. And I want to wish you perfect health and a lot of good luck and please put your palms together. And you wish Sabda Buddha no Bavena, Sada Sati Bavan to Tail. Bow to Sabda Mangalang Rakan to Sabda Devata. Sabda Dhamma no Bavena, Sada Sati Bavan to Tail. Bow to Sabda Mangalang Rakan to Sabda Devata. Sabda Sangha no Bavena, Sada Sati May you always be happy and well. Thank you very much. Uh, in Buddhism, we always uh, wish you well. That means you should good health. Two types of health. Physical health, emotional health. Always, Sukihotu means may you be well. When you bow to us, we say Sukihotu. That means may you be well. Meaning behind, may you be physically healthy, May you be emotionally healthy. And thank you very much. Uh, please uh, let us do loving kindness meditation. For that, please keep your body great and close your eyes and whatever I say interest in your mind. May I be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. May no harm come to me, may no difficulties come to me, may no problems come to me, may I have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems and Areas in life. May my parents be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. May no harm come to them. May no difficulties come to them. May they have patience, courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. May my teachers be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. May no harm come to them. May no difficulties come to them. May no problems come to them. May they have patience, courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. May my relatives and friends be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. May no harm come to them, may no difficulties come to them, may no problems come to them. May they have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome <coughs> inevitable difficulties, problems and failures in life. Someone does not like me, that persons and those people be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. May no harm come to them. May no difficulties come to them. May no problems come to them. May they have patience, courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. May all living beings be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. May no harm come to them. May no 
difficulties come to them, may no problems come to them. May they have patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems and failures in life. Dukkha pata chanitukha Paya pata chanitpaya Soka pata chanitsoka Pontu sape pilpaninu Dukkha pata chanitukha Paya pata chanitpaya so kapata janiso ka onto sape pipanino dukapata janitu ka bhayapata janitaya so kapata janiso ka onto sape pipanino Thank you, everybody. <laughs> there are some, uh, I brought not many, only 20 of them, but they will be Kandra Sutta. Uh, anyone who's interested can get them. So, first, uh, thank you, Fonte. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you for being here. Really an honor and a pleasure uh, since we met you many years ago. It's just been a, a beautiful relationship. Uh, thank you for teaching us and guiding us and uh, making this temple as, as much of a home uh, to yourselves as it is to us. So it's really a tremendous honor to, to be here. Um, and all of us, as we continue to send uh, merit and loving kindness to everyone in Sri Lanka from the recent tragedy, uh, we send our love and our hearts there as well. Um, so th thank you all for uh, being here. Uh, if you are here at the Dharma Bhavan Temple for the first time, um, welcome. You picked a special day to show up to your intro to Buddhism and meditation class. Uh, so so thank you. And uh, see to my parents, patience and courage. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've said that many times. Uh, we do have, uh, Bhante has uh, many books that are uh, beautifully written. Uh, we do have them downstairs, but for you, uh, there's some books down there. Uh, really just a tremendous thank you to this community. Uh, thank you to those who made uh, the statues and everything here uh, really possible. Uh, it's just beautiful. We wouldn't be here uh, without all of you um, and every person in this room. So uh, thank you again. Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Yes. And uh, so Bonte would like to, um, we're going to take one big group photo. Uh, and yes, yeah, so we're going to come up front. For those of you who are here, just be very careful of the camera. But uh, we're going to slowly, maybe we'll start um, with those of you who are on the cushions. Everybody just come up here and then we're going to slowly bring everybody up front and we'll take one large group photo. So please don't skip out. Tom, you watch the door, don't let anybody pass. Jen, by the door, you get to come in. And uh, careful of the camera. But we're going to take one uh, large group photo with Bonte, please. Yes, it'll be interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so the just keep going, sit around and behind up on the shrine there. We will all fit, I promise. <laughs> Two plus years ago, about 180 of us took a photo up there. So don't be shy. Uh. 
The taller folks can go in the back, the shorter folks in the front. Won't make any jokes. Yeah, if you want, um, actually, Richard, Carolyn, if you want to open maybe the little shrine area so people can go back there, might make some space. Carefully. Yeah. Oh, we need a shadow in the photo. <laughs> yes, we will come up. Thank <laughs> you. 